Hi guys, so this is just a really quick short on ostomy and ostomy care. Um, and this is really specifically talking about for GI type of ostomies. So what are they? So ostomies are a diversion for your stool. And the two most common types that we talk about are a colostomy and an ileostomy. Um, and the big difference between them is that is of course where they're located. Um, you know, a colostomy is in your colon, an ileostomy is um, in your ileum. Um, and with a colostomy, it's more formed stool, and you may or may not need a collection bag. And I'll tell you, nine times out of ten, you're going to need a collection bag because people are going to walk around with, um, you know, um, an opening to their bowels um, without something to cover protect it. But um, people with colostomies can get to the point where they can kind of sense or know when they need to go, um, and stuff like that. Whereas with an ileostomy, they're always going to need a collection bag. They do not take that off. It's liquid stool; they have no control over it. There is what's called a continent ileostomy, which known as a coke pouch. Um, that is possible to be used. So what is coming out from the abdomen? In both of these, it's what's called a stoma. And there's three different types of stoma. There's what's called an end stoma. Um, and that is one opening. So kind of think like this. There's just one um, part of the bowel that's pointing out. And this is at the end um, of the bowel. So like, let's say that a patient had ulcerative colitis um, and um, we caught them. We had a cut out part of their bowel. What they'll do sometimes is they'll put that end stoma out. And then they'll actually keep, if there's like good tissue at the end, they'll create what's called a Hartman's pouch. Um, which is where they have part of the rectum left in case they ever want to reattach. Um, but sometimes it's um, like, you know, if there's an obstruction or if there's part of the bowel they have to cut out, they um, to create a temporary or permanent end stoma, which is one piece of tissue out, and that's going to be then the end of your bowel. Um, so instead of stuff coming out of your rectum, it's going to be coming out this end. So think of this as the end. It's the last part of your bowel. So it's only one. The other two are both going to have two openings. So there's what's called a loop. And literally, you can see it here. It's like the bowel is looped around, and then there's two holes. And one's going to be for stool and one's going to be for mucus. Usually these are temporary uh, when you're going through uh, we call it some sort of um, uh, bowel problem and that uh, we call it um, the bowel disease like inflammatory bowel disease or otherwise or some there's a lot there's a million different things that can happen that where you could possibly need this but um, this is usually just going to be a temporary um, while uh, maybe your bowel's healing etc. Um, then there's also what's known as a double barrel. This also has two openings but it's not a loop it's it's literally two different parts of your bowels and each of them are both sticking out. And again, there's a proximal side that's for stool and a distal side that's for mucus. Um, so kind of think of it like, um, for both these last two I just described, it's kind of like when they do gastric bypass and they still leave your stomach and your small intestine there so that the parts can still work. So you have this one part that's sticking out it has the mucus that's draining so that you can still have that part of your bowel functioning. And it's possible, again, that they can reattach these later. Um, but um, again, so um, just to kind of sum up, inst instoma is one and it's the end of your bowel, that's gonna be where all the stool comes out. A loop is a loop of your bowel that's coming out with two openings, one for stool and one for mucus, and a double barrel is two separate parts of your bowel coming out, one for stool and one for mucus. Um, so um, what is my role as the nurse taking care of a patient with an ostomy? Um, I need to make sure to consult the wound care nurse because they are going to play a crucial part in providing education and everything else that the patient's going to need when they're going home and to take care of this. There's a very big psychological component to having an ostomy, especially a GI ostomy, because there's a lot of shame and embarrassment. It can affect their sex life. It can affect their self-image. So the wound care and ostomy nurse deals with this day in, day out. They're going to be the the most helpful person with that. I want to monitor for bleeding. Make sure I'm monitoring the stoma. It should be rosy pink, mildly swollen. It should not be black, blue, dusky, um, pale, any of that stuff. So rosy pink, mild swelling is normal. And the mild swelling is right after surgery usually. It shouldn't be swollen forever. Um, monitoring intake and output closely um, is going to be really key for this patient because we want to make sure that, um, you know, of course, what's going in is coming out, but also that, you know, they're really at risk for fluid and electrolyte imbalances. So especially with an ileostomy, I'm going to be worried about a lot of fluid loss because they can have really high outputs throughout the day. Um, and they could be losing a lot of that, um, the fluid and electrolytes, and it could even um, end up with some imbalances there because of that. 
So let's talk about teaching. General teaching for anyone with an ostomy. I need to teach them how to change the pouch and apply the skin barrier to protect their skin. Um, I'm gonna teach them about diarrhea and um, gas forming foods. And there's a table in your book that's super helpful. I would definitely check it out. That tells you what foods are gonna put you more prone for diarrhea, gas, et cetera. Cause that's what patients wanna know. They really are embarrassed about having to have this. Um, I, should, I, I don't wanna put words in people's mouth. A lot of patients are embarrassed about having to have an ostomy. So teaching them foods that are gonna maybe decrease that amount of diarrhea or gas that they're having is helpful. Um, I'm, they need to increase their fluid intake, especially during hot weather or if they're sweating a lot or having diarrhea because they're having more losses. And so I need to make sure that they are keeping that fluid balance and not getting dehydrated. They need to know what the signs and symptoms of common fluid and electrolyte imbalances look like. When do they need to seek help? They should be changing their pouch every four to seven days. And of course, if there's something happens before then they can change it before then, but on average, they're changed four to seven days and they shouldn't be doing any heavy lifting um, while they have the colostomy ileostomy. Um, the only other real big difference with colostomies, they can take it off for, during showering, whereas the ileostomy, they have to wear that pouch at all times because they can just be constantly leaking stool. Um, ileostomies also tend to be more narrow, so they're more at risk for obstruction. So we want to tell them to chew food very well and make sure that they are, um, <laughs> what do you call it, um, uh, you know, it also meeting that fluid intake that they need for those losses that they're going to have through their ileostomy because they may be more at risk for those fluid and electrolyte imbalances with an ileostomy because it's liquid stool versus the colostomy. All right, that was the little short over ostomies. I hope it helped to fill in some knowledge for you. Talk to you later.